Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I have six wines in front of me, uh, and um, some of them have got something in common. If there is a general theme, um, they've all got screw caps. Uh, so I don't really need my corkscrew. There's, we've got how many different countries? We've got a few different countries. We'll just sit in, see where we get to. First two, Slovenia from the Pullis Winery. And the first one is uh, 2011 Lasky Riesling. Let's give it a whirl. Now Lasky Riesling is the grape that um, uh, is famous, infamous maybe, uh, for uh, being uh, not proper Riesling. I mean, there's the, there's a, a, a Lutima Riesling, it used to be called, or Riesling. Um, and... Um, it's, there is probably some relation back in the ages past to uh, proper Riesling, uh, but in general it's been used for rather insipid, uh, strange, weedy off dry wines. But there are a few places, Austria does it quite well, um, and uh, where well, it's known as Welsh Riesling. Uh, but here, I stick my nose in here and I think this smells rather good. Um, it smells of um, baked apples, apple crumble. There's a um, little bit of floral freshness there as well, but it, sm it smells like it's going to be reasonably full bodied. Um, Fullish bodied, uh, but with some freshness about it and with this nice apple fruit. Doesn't smell like any of that uh, insipid floral muck, in other words. Well, I said I thought it was going to be full bodied. It's actually leaner and tighter than I, than I expected. So it's got these broad, quite, uh, quite rich flavours, but it all seems to be reined in by. Um, I hesitate to use the, the mineral term, but uh, it feels like there's something stony uh, holding it all together, keeping it fresh, uh, keeping it lively. Um, I don't notice any sweetness there at all, apart from the sweetness of, uh, of juicy ripe fruit. Really nice wine. Yeah. I'd love something like um, uh, Dover Soul with that, because it's got that crispness about it. But it's got that quite a, a um, it, it, well, it's funny, it's, like it's got that delicacy, um, rich flavour but delicate. Does that make sense? It does to me. Let's try another one from them. This is uh, their 2011, again, Belly Pinot. Uh, now, I'm not sure whether Belly's the place. Did the other one say Belly on? No, Lasky Riesling. I don't know whether Belly Pinot is, um, which Pinot it is, whether it's Pinot Gris or Pinot Blanc. If I find out, I will flash something up on screen for you. Anyway, let's give this one a whirl. It's got that richer, muskier character uh, of Pinot. Makes me think it's more on the Pinot Gris side. Uh, and I, I think it's certainly Pinot Gris rather than uh, the crisp Pinot Grigio style that they're, they're looking for here. Feels like there's a, a bit of weighty peach, uh, pear skin, um, and but it's, again, smells, smells good, fine. Well, it's, it's weird. In structure, it's very, very similar to the previous one. Rich flavours, but reined in by a similar sort of stony character, uh, which makes me think it's probably more on the soil side. Maybe something to do with the winemaking, but no, it, it feels like there's a, a, a soil profile that's talking here. And uh, uh, so, yes, you get that a little bit of citrus, but it's more on those uh, uh, the peachy pear flavours, but reined in by the citrus uh, freshness and that stony character. Again, very nice wine. I'm, I love, like these two. Okay, next three, all Chenin Blanc. Uh, first one is from France, and it's La Grille, uh, cool fermented Chenin Blanc, uh, and uh, vintage here. I can't see a vintage on here, um, but uh, anyway, let's just give it a whirl. Well, I quite like that slightly bruised green apple and um, lemon character, but behind it there's a slight, uh, slight mustiness, not the cork mustiness, it's got a screw cap. Uh, I think that maybe there was a little rot in the grapes, I'm not sure. Uh, some people talk about uh, this uh, uh, thing, geosmin. Uh, I think there'll be some people who, the, the geosmin police will be out on this and thinking, oh, Oh, yeah, a little bit of it there. Um, and it, it's strange. If the wine is big in, a, enough, it's in the background. But uh, if it's on, on the lighter, delicate side like this, uh, sometimes it tends to take over a bit. Let's see whether I can taste it. And it's quite nice, crisp, tangy apple and um, lemon and quince. And I, I, it's funny, I don't notice as much uh, when I taste it as, uh, as when I smell it. It's okay. Um, I, it's, it's okay. It, I, I don't like it as much as, as the first two, and uh, that characteristic just puts me off ever so slightly. Next to South African Chenin Blancs, and so the first one um, is Liberty um, 2013 Chenin Blanc from Western Cape. Let's give this one a whirl. 
Well, we're already in 2014. This is I'm, I'm recording this on uh, January the 17th. Uh, so this isn't a, a, a brand new wine anymore. It's, it's had a few months to settle down in bottle. And um, it smells like it's settled down rather nicely. Um, it's strange. It feels like it's going to be one of those that's got the... Um, Halfway between Sauvignon and Chenin, um, what I mean by that is it feels like it's going to have uh, some of the Chenin flavours, uh, but the Sauvignon crispness. Um, some Chenins are on that rounder, fuller style. Um, here it feels like it's it's on that crisper, um, more citrusy Sauvignon style, but um, with Chenin flavours. Does that make sense? Anyway, let's try it. Yeah, and that's that's exactly uh, what it is. It's got this. A uh, touch of uh, guava, a uh, touch of um, apple, and um, but then the, the, the structure is is, is, is really crisp um, and um, yeah, it's classic summer wine. I mean, this is perfect for a, a, a December, a January uh, in in the north of England. But um, what impresses me about it is it feels like it's it, it, it's confident lighter style wine. It's not trying to uh, seduce you with residual sugar or anything like that. It's just happy being a uh, lighter bodied but fuller flavoured style and um, bully for them for making uh, making a wine like that. Um, I think the guy who makes the next wine has got some sort of hand in that but uh, anyway or well, the guy not maybe not who makes it but he's the um, Charles Back uh, uh, of Fairview so the next wine is Fairview 2013 Darling Chenin Blanc. I think he's got some hand in uh, in the previous one. Anyway, let's give the, the fair view a whirl. Now this seems um, richer but more backward. Um, the, it feels like there's a, a more of a core of, um, of a body of flavour here, but uh, today uh, it's not maybe singing quite as loudly as the um, as, as the Liberty one is. Um, it may be that it just needs a few more uh, months to, uh, to come out of its shell or it maybe needs a bit more swirling. So I'll give it a bit more swirling before I taste it. And that swirling seemed to do the trick. Um, and so it's it's got, it's strange, similar flavours to the, the previous one. Uh, guava, uh, a bit of the uh, very ripe, but ripe red apple, um, and some very ripe citrus fruit in there. But there's also, um, I noticed texture, it feels like there's a, a, a nutty, leasy character in there, as if, as if the wine's been, uh, had quite a bit of time on the lees, picking up a little bit of body and personality. And if it has had that extra time on the lees, then it would probably have been bottled later than the uh, uh, the one before, which would explain why it was a little bit more backward. Still feels like it's got some opening up to do, but um, it's um, uh, it's a step up. It's a different style of Shannon. I mean, I can I, I can see a place for, for both of those. The the uh, the Liberty one is that crisp lunchtime wine. Uh, the, um, uh, the 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 Fairview one, it's, yeah, a little bit more body, a little bit more muscle, and. Uh, uh, take on um, so maybe seafood with the first one, monkfish with the second one. I, I enjoy both of those. Final one, uh, Viognier. Um, yes, again, as I, as I said, all they've got in common is screw caps. So this is uh, from Chile, Casa Silva Reserva Cuvée Colchagua Viognier 2012. Oh, it's one of those screw caps that keeps going round and round. I might have to. Uh, uh, oh dear me. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, this has happened on one of video before I had to go and get some pliers for it. Bah. Okay, uh, do you know what? I'll be back. Well, I'm back and I'll hold the bottle up to the camera. I, I can't get into it. Um, <laughs> I've, I've blunted a knife. I haven't cut myself, that's the main thing. But it just keeps going round and round. Do you know what? I'm going to have to stop the video. I'll, I'll plonk it in another video. The only problem is a little bit of wine started leaking out of it. Um, but, um, hey, uh, I might get it in another video. I might just post my notes on the end of here. But, uh, uh, so Casa Silva, I don't know if that's a problem that uh, uh, you've come across before, but uh, it means that this has been a tasting of um, five wines rather than six. But, uh, hey, uh, the, 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 the Pullis wines were really nice, and I like the two Chenin from uh, South Africa. The uh, French one, hey, uh, but... Um, at least I haven't cut myself. <laughs> See you soon.